everyone this is Ross and in today's video I want to talk about this garden bed right here uh, but also I want to show you guys the radishes I just got to try my first real homegrown radish believe it or not and while it was very small and they are still young um, I was blown away by the flavor but this garden bed we just created it this year we just put some soil down we had cardboard uh, underneath as well as some straw um, and then we transplanted a lot of crops out in here sometime around I think um, March 15th believe it or not the the ground had thawed pretty quickly in March and then what we did was we actually came in here April 1st and direct seeded some things behind it um, you can see the peas are really far along these transplanted out really well um, we did struggle a bit with transplants because while this row cover I think is an amazing thing for these cool loving crops getting them a real nice head start um, it kind of really damaged a lot of the transplants because the transplants were a bit too big and then it was also really windy and this this row cover really kind of beat the plants up <laughs> And then what I've learned over time is that if you just have enough rocks holding the row cover down, it won't blow as much and I would have been fine. I would have had a lot less issues here. But not only is the row cover really heating this up and getting a lot of these crops a warmer soil, it's also protecting them from different pests, um, any critters that may be around in the yard at this time of the year. I'm just blown away and you can kind of see what has been transplanted and what was just direct seeded. It's actually a bit difficult to tell. There's a lot in here that is really heavily seeded and very close together. So we'll see. I know this is spinach here. We've also got, I think, rows of, this is a Hakurai turnip, I believe, in here. But it also looks like we have like dill, but I didn't even plant dill. <laughs> and <laughs> we've also got things like, uh, I think spinach in between the two turnip rows. We've got radishes here, which I wanna show you guys now. Um, these radishes, again, are very young and they're not really ready to be picked, but you can definitely eat this stuff young. And this is a French breakfast radish. This is a radish that, uh, I picked up from Baker Creek this year. There's two different types of radishes out there, I guess you could say. Is that one type you need, um, you really should grow it in the spring, the other type you should grow it in the fall. And I've been growing the watermelon radish in the spring, not knowing that that was an issue, that the watermelon radish should be grown in the fall. So I got myself a spring radish here and I was blown away. really juicy I don't know if you guys can see that it's really juicy and it's got that radish flavor in it right it's got like that that spiciness to it I guess that zest but it's really sweet um, and the zest is not really that intense and I think it has a lot to do with the time of the year that this is the fact that everything's so cold still, or not really too hot still. Um, I'm absolutely blown away by that crop. It reminds me a lot of a Hakurai turnip, and the Hakurai turnip is not your typical turnip, guys. The Hakurai turnip is really good, really sweet, especially earlier or late in the season. And um, I really like these French breakfast radishes. We've also got some beets in here. We're gonna grow actually beets for the first time. We'll see how all this, this really turns out. I'm, I've been pretty much blown away by the growth because of this, this row cover. Um, also, we have Mizuna here and I can sort of start picking this. I probably shouldn't, but I wanna talk about this. This is a mustard green. Well, it's similar to a mustard green. Maybe it's not in the mustard family, but Maybe it is. This is uh, from Japan, the Japanese style lettuce, and um, it's incredible. 
it's actually really sweet and really good. We had some growing back in here last year and the stuff lasted all summer until I picked it or until some pests got to it. Um, it's one of the best things you can grow here in terms of lettuces. It has a nice texture. Um, it's pretty sweet, but it's also got a little of that mustard intensity to it. So it's really nice combo. And I think it goes great on burgers. Uh, it grows gr goes great in a salad. Uh, it's really good. So I guess that's enough vegetable talk for now. We'll come at you guys with more as we kind of progress through this. I guess I can show you guys in comparison the other garden beds. I mean, we did seed some of this stuff a bit later, but this is what the peas look like. Such a huge difference. And then also all the little seedlings that we direct seeded, they're not even really showing their true leaves yet. So a lot of this I may not even get a chance to eat. You can see that. This is all very similar stuff. We got, you know, spinaches, different types of beets and um, the radishes we just had, the hakurai turnips, all this stuff, even carrots, which we have in the other bed as well. And then here's peas behind it, which we also direct seeded. Um, and this soil is a bit warmer. So because this is a bit warmer without that mulch, without that rice holes on it, these are a bit further ahead. Um, but then again, we also have some over here. And these guys were transplanted out and they're definitely not as far along. Although not that far behind of the ones in the row cover. So not bad. I and mean, overall, I'm really excited for this year and all the vegetables that are to come. So, all right guys. Thank you for watching this one and uh, we'll see you for tomorrow's video. All right, take care.